Hello YouTube! Today I'm gonna do a sound design video with the Digitone. I'll try to make this short and more specific and I'm gonna do a series of these kinds of videos. So shorter videos with theme sounds to design. So today it will be a ambient pad and I've got two, two, <laughs> I have two different approaches to sound design ambient pads and I want to show them both. So yeah, let's dive into it. Okay, so I'm on a new clear init sound. First approach I have to making ambient pads is to create chords and have these chords evolve over time. And I think a good pad is a constantly evolving sound texture and on the digitone we have two lfos to do that and we have some envelopes to do that in the sound so i will use them to create the ambient soundscape so first off we're gonna see what chord we will have might be a cool chord. So I will just play the chord in the sequencer so that we can so that we have something to work with. giving it a longer attack and a longer release so that it's more a smooth transition and I'm also gonna turn off the amp envelope reset so that if the amplitude is still halfway and it accepts a new note it will continue from that point instead of resetting to the bottom. So to start um, I'm gonna do the d most difficult part and that's like doing the FM modulation because I kind of know what I'm doing, but it's not as clear as subtractive synthesis, so it's also a bit trial and error. So I'm going to first set up some uh, ratios. I always try to keep, for like soft pads, I try to keep them like equal, so like 1 over 2 or 1 over 4, maybe 3. And this one I'm going to do something over 2 so that I can mix like an octave up with the mixer because the normal sound comes from the one and then that's a two which also outputs. I will do this 12. Let's see what we got. Okay, and I'm going to play around with some modulation in this uh, section. Here we go. So it immediately starts to already move the sound. So what I also notice is that I actually really like when this level, I increase it a little and slow it down a little. So I'm gonna put an LFO on the B level. I think that will sound really cool. So that will be Sin B level, yes. Uh, I will put on a sine wave because I really want to make it smooth. The depth I'm gonna leave for now. 
Well, I put it re like really high so we can hear what we're doing. And the modes I will put on trigger because I want to incorporate like a slow fade. And if if you put it on free mode, the fade never kicks off only when you start the sound. So you have to re-trigger the mode so you have yeah you can have the fade. So first, uh, listen to what it sounds like now. <laughs> Obviously that's too much and too fast, so I'll put this on lower. That's exactly what I uh, wanted in the sound. I really like the, the the how do you call it the harsh brass sound that comes out of it. it reminds me of the Alice's Andromeda, so that's kind of a good good thing. The same sparkle in the high or something. I can't explain it. Okay, let's go back to. So I think I covered that. Let's see if other algorithms are nicer, or let's see how that sounds. <laughs> Yeah, they all have the character, but I really like the, the first one, that's the, the brightest of them all, I think. And especially uh, with the filter, I really want to uh, use this one, so... Now I'm gonna check out what the detune, the feedback and the harmonic harmonics does to the sound. So here we go. Normally the feedback adds a little bit of noise or grit to, to a pad, which can be really nice, especially if you filter it down. Um, so yeah, so we'll see how it sounds here. <laughs> way of the modulation it becomes a little bit dirty so I, I don't like that so I will, I will not use feedback for now let's see what the teaching does This is kind of nice where you see the um, in the end the, the sound get even more moving. I really like that. So let's see what harmonics does.
kind of like this. I think it's... And you can of course in the LFO speed up the fade and have these envelopes a little faster so you have the second part of the sound sooner so it's more of that sound. But I really like the evolving pads. And I think the, um, the effect of the G tune works better with notes close to each other so I think when I do this... We have more like the intertwining of these notes. So yeah, I usually try to keep my notes of the chord close together so you have like a cool, yeah, cool compact pad sound. Okay, I think this is a really cool FM pad already, but it, let's see what the filter does. Because one thing I also really like to do with pad sounds is have a filter, usually a bandpass filter, but it's not on here, unfortunately. So the two-pole low-pass filter works, I think, the best. But yeah, to really get to the frequency that the pad is in, and it helps again to have the notes close to each other and then emphasize the cut of frequency like on the edge of self oscillation and then you get even more of like the, the gritty stuff so let's see how that sounds So what I did here is, so the, the A 
part of this one it resets constantly and then you hear like the sound change so if i want to stay in that second part of the sound i can turn off the a envelope reset so what it basically does is it stays on this level and then it picks up from that level again instead of like the harsh in the beginning so it's a different sound if you continue the notes but yeah i think it also sounds really cool so a lot of options on the digitone sound blast and you heard what i did with uh, the resonance just try to find a sweet spot on the edge of the chord and then maybe do a little slow movement and then yeah you get like a really nice moving sound and you take away uh, some of the really harsh part of the sound so Yeah, I'm liking this sound so far, so I'm really happy with this. And we only use one LFO and you see how much the sound is already changing, so we could modulate it even more. I don't want it at this part. So we can add some effect to this as well. Let's see. Normally, normally I'm more of a delay type of guy, not like so much reverb, but on pads usually you have like a really big reverb and yeah, that's part of the sound. But I'm first going to check out the, the chorus. It adds some nice uh, move, extra movement again, and it's more of like the, the old string machine type sound. I kind of like that, that it a little bit down. Delay, I will just go for reverb in this one. Um, we'll, let's crank it up all the way. Make the DK a little longer, so that it's a proper reverb, and let's see what happens. That's the reverb, you heard it. I'm not gonna dive into these settings, maybe another time. What I do like to know is that if on this page, if I dial down the volume, if it still does the send to the reverb, I don't know. No, it doesn't. So this is just the volume of the sound. So you, you cannot have a 100% wet. Or is this, no, this is a send, so it will be mixed together unfortunately so what if i turn on the this level maybe it will turn off the dry signal and we end up with a full wet signal no okay i was just curious Okay, so there's no way to have a 100% wet signal. Okay, this is uh, one way to make a, a, a pad. And then I would make a chord progression or something or two chords that play off each other and then create the song uh, around it. Another trick I use to make it like an ambient pet texture is not by playing like these long these long chords but to have like a lot of notes which end up making the texture so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna delete this one and let's say we're gonna be in a 
let's do it simple c major all the white keys if if that is our scale then i'm going to put in random notes with a big attack and then i will quantize it later and then and then i'm going to explain what i what i how am i doing this here we go I think you're already hearing what I'm doing with this. It creates, let's first quantize it. It creates kind of a cloud of, of notes. And if you have like a long release and a, yeah, you can play with the attack time, but then we can, yeah, you get a cloud of notes with different texture stuff. And that creates a different kind of ambient texture, I think. And if you crank up the, the reverb and you filter it down, then you can get like a really texture that's moving and you don't hear necessarily the individual notes anymore. So, oh yeah, and this, the amplitude envelope reset needs to be off for this because yeah, you want it to stay in that area. See how this creates like the cloud of notes with like an ambient under under carpet how do you call it and you hear like a melody on top with the with the attack so yeah i really like this kind of um note clouds so to speak okay so this these are my two approaches to making ambient pads yeah in the end the sky is the limit of course But yeah, the key is to have movement in the sound because it's really boring to have only that. So movement in the sound. Um, I really like re repetitive music also with ambient, but you have to program it with random changes or like fades and different melodies to never experience the same sounds in a song. Just yeah, it has to be different every time. Even if you encounter the same melody, the notes should move slightly different. And that's, uh, that's what I find really um, important in ambient pads or ambient textures. So yeah, I hope you learned something. Um, if you did, uh, please like and subscribe. I'm hoping to do a lot more of these kind of videos. I really like to do them. Uh, yeah, that's it for now. I will see you in the next video. Peace.